Good evening and welcome back this week to Balancing the Scales of Justice. I'm Shirley Millwood. I'm a lawyer here in Calhoun County. My office is in Alexandria, Alabama. I've been practicing law nearly 15 years. I've been in the legal field a total of 26 years and so glad to have you all back this week and thank you for watching and tuning in with us and we hope that we can bring you some valuable information today and I have some guests with me and I don't think that my guest needs any introduction. Hey everybody, I'm Darren at AK Southern Mom and I do not have a law degree, but I'm glad to be here. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. I'm so excited you reached out uh, and I wanted I wanted to do this and I love you and I love your program and uh, but I was actually doing my own show and we got the phone call and Tater Tater was with me so I was like I hope I hope it's okay. We're a package deal today. So, I, I don't think he's I don't think he's uh, he's not hating it. So tell us about Tater. Tater's cool. Tater's the best dog in the whole world. He's a, uh, he's a toy poodle and I had a friend of mine and they uh, they were a little allergic, couldn't keep him anymore. He was about uh, I don't know four or five months old and a lot of people get that misconception that I mean this isn't you know nature science but you know you learn something new every day maybe this will help somebody out there's actually no such thing as a hypoallergenic dog um, there's just not now poodles are like we are they have hair they don't have fur so they're less their danders less and all that wonderful stuff they're a great alternative for those that may have allergies but this particular situation their daughter has very sensitivity to dandruff of any kind so I ended up with a tater tot I didn't want it I didn't, I didn't want another dog. Right. And a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, actually, you know who they are, um, had called me and they're like, I, I, I want to bring something over to your house and see what you think about it. And I was like, no, you're not either because I know exactly what you're, <laughs> I know exactly what you're dragging over here and I don't want to see it. And uh, I was, she was like, come on, come on, go play. I was like, I fly out in the morning. I'm going to Kansas City tomorrow. So she actually ended up coming and uh, I'm like, oh my gosh, he is so beautiful. Um, I'm not giving you a nickel for him, but you're also not leaving with him either. So you're not uh, leaving yeah, with him you're either. You're not leaving with him. So he was, his name, you know, his name's kind of cute. So when he was younger, he had, he, was, he wouldn't, Lord, he wouldn't that big around. And he could put, you put him in, but on the ground, he looked like a little pile of hash browns laying there. Okay. He did. And I told her, I said, what, what is a name that would be good for uh, him, you know, looking like a little, I wish there was a smaller name for hash browns. And then the lady that gifted him to me, um, Shanda, she said, uh, well, there is. No, no, no. Don't what about uh, Tater Tot? Tater Tot's basically hash browns small. I was like, hot dog, we got us a name. So Tater Tot it was, come here, Tater Tot. You get, look, get off my Well, we bag. had to get Tater Tot up here to look, let, look, let our look, audience look, see Tater Tot. Did, he did, look, he did, he's daddy's <laughs> baby. He's daddy's baby. Look at him. I got he's a legal precious. question for you. What What should I do? Look, Tater, look, you up there in the corner. Look up there. Look, look, yeah. Tater, look, Tater, look. <laughs> Look up. Look, there he is. No, there you no, go. Tater, no. How cute. He's a good boy. Get down there and get into something. Y'all ain't got no rat poison laying right here, do you? <laughs> no? Okay, we're good. So how have you been? Good, good. You've been good. You've been stressed. You've been you've been working. You got a lot going on right now, don't Not you? Not really stressed. Just no? busy. Just busy. Well, you wear it well and you do good. Well, thank you. I'm I so always excited. say it's it's never stressed. It's just busy. Listen, I got a legal question for you. Okay. Okay, Ask so me. the other day. A friend of mine came into town, he was he works from out of state and he was only in town for a few days and he had car issues. Long story short, I let him borrow one of my work trucks out there. I have an expedition on the farm and I was like, take the take the expedition. So he goes, he gets in front of the McDonald's in front of Oxford, and BAM! I'm not talking about apple pies here, folks. I'm talking about a crash. Right. This guy just came over and hit him. He did some kind of U-turn or something and hits the ex, you know, hits the truck. So my buddy pulls over, the guy gets out, the guy driving that vehicle also did not own that vehicle. But the owner did have insurance on the vehicle, so they showed representation of, 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 the, of the insurance. Two weeks later, rocks on. Yeah, we're not covering this because he wasn't covered. So, what? So, I'm angry. Yeah, so generally in that situation, whenever there's a, a car wreck, okay. um, they pro so he's provided his coverage, and now the carrier is saying he was not a covered driver. Right. even though there's insurance on the vehicle. Yes. And so in that case, what you need to do is reach out to your insurance provider. Okay. And you need to put them on notice of the claim and let them know about the accident. Okay. And then your insurance company will handle. Go after their insurance company. Yes, they will handle okay. uh, paying for the repairs to your vehicle. And then what they will do is they will file a claim against the owner and or driver now, of the, that vehicle and then your insurance company will pursue that and that'll save you those legal fees and those court calls from having to pursue that. that was what, that's what I was about to ask. Why can't I just consult with my attorney and or, or whoever and say, hey, you know, can we send them a letter? Can we not take them directly to court? So that would be between them. So that would be rather costly. Right. And, and so whoever your insurance carrier is, mm. part of your policy is that when you're in an accident, 
they will provide legal defense for you. Okay. So there's no reason for you to go and pay for an attorney to represent you when your insurance company is going to provide a they legal defense for you. They don't have that on the commercials. Um, Did you get rammed and you didn't want to? Did that, you have to dodge true. and you didn't mean to? That's okay because we got an entire crew of, of lawyers to, I see, I didn't know that. I thought I had to get my own attorney and go after them and do all this other stuff. So. Okay. Now, you would have to do that if you did not have full coverage insurance on your vehicle. Right. Because your full coverage insurance is going to pay the cost of the repairs to your vehicle. Yeah. And another thing, while we're talking about this, you know, and there, I'm assuming there were no injuries. It there was, was no just, injuries, no just damages to the no. car. So that's a property damage claim. And then if there had been injuries, that's a bodily injury claim, okay. which is a, it's all together, so, so to speak, but also dissected into two. Okay. Um, generally, you know, a lawyer, if you go in and say, hey, I had a car wreck, but I had no damages, and damages are injuries. Right, sure. Um, I had no injuries. The injuries that a person sustains in a personal injury, in a, in a car wreck case, right. those personal injury to pursue those, you're looking at the amount of damages they have, such as medical bills, sure. lost wages, uh, you know, mileage getting back and forth to doctors, uh, prescription costs, things like that. And so what we tell someone is if you've been in an accident, you need to keep up and document every penny that you spend. Sure. Because all of those things cumulatively will go toward the total cost of the, the out-of-pocket expenses or damages that you've incurred. And that is what factors in when we are attempting to negotiate a settlement or when we're looking at going to trial if they're denying coverage right. is the amount of damages and, and there's like a multiplication factor with that. It's a lot. Yes, it's generally like two and a half percent. It's or almost as if one would have been. to have a law degree to know all this stuff. Absolutely, that's correct. Yes, yes. You know, Shirley, I and wasn't, years of experience. I wasn't actually in the vehicle with them. However, I've had had some back pain. Well, that would not work. Well. That would not work. <laughs> Shucks. And another thing that's important is if there is someone living in your home, mm. they must be listed as a driver on your insurance policy. Because if you have an insurance policy... We're going to go to commercial break. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> uh, we, no. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you have... Um, you know, so many people will have... He wasn't coverage listed on, on the, the thing, though. And, and so with him not being listed on the insurance makes me believe that he's a resident of the home where the owner lives. Right. So because sure. the he's owner... Sure, he's had mail going there before. So with the owner being, having the insurance coverage, but the driver, they're telling you that the driver was not covered, that tells me that that driver is most likely a resident of the same home that the owner is a resident of. Okay, so I was talking about my person. I don't know about them. Now, but... Be, oh, no, your person didn't live with you. Right, right, right. No, right. But, no, but no, my no. thing okay. is, like, even if my person wasn't on my insurance, I didn't do it. We didn't do anything wrong. They hit us. Right, but what I'm saying to you is if the, if the guy who was driving your vehicle... Yes, ma'am. ...was a resident of your house... Right. ...you would have had to specifically had him listed as a driver. Okay. But because he's not a right. member of your household and you loaned him your vehicle, well, then that covers him. Okay. That insurance covers him. Okay. And, uh, but if you don't have, if you do have someone living in your home. Sure. You have to have them specifically listed as insured drivers. I understand. So that's what I'm talking about. With so the, we gotta be the careful the anytime someone's you. like, hey, we're gonna go down here to the store and get some beer, you know, with my mind of gas, what you got? And they just pick, you, pick your keys to them. Right. You gotta you be do. careful with that. You do. You I gotta do. be careful with that. Yes. I'm and, bad about that. And the hey, other, if you need a ride. Yes. I, it, I'll throw my keys. You guys need anything? You, you know, you, right. <laughs> cameraman's right. opening his hands right now. Wait, I'll, look, <laughs> I'll pitch them to you. I got to stop doing that. You do. I got to stop do. doing that. Look, I found myself in this situation, but we weren't at fault. So do I still need to be scared? No. What you need to do is reach out to your insurance company. That's what I'm going to do. As soon as this, your this interview company. is over, I'm going to call, call. Can you be on the phone with me if I put them on speakerphone? I can do that. Maybe. Yes. Maybe that'll. Yes. <laughs> Yes. She's uh, never going to ask me to do another show again. <laughs> so reach out to them. They will take over the claim. Okay. They'll pay for your damages. But while we're on this subject, one thing that a lot of people don't realize, and I have stressed to my clients over the years, is when you go to take out your insurance coverage on your vehicle, right. you have the option to have UM, UIM coverage, which is underinsured or uninsured motorist coverage on your, uh, on your insurance policy. The insurance companies will actually have you to specifically sign waiving that coverage if right. you do not have that coverage. And it is so important. It, it'll cost you a few extra dollars a month to have that UIM coverage. Yeah. But it's so worth it because what happens 
is, you know, the minimum limits in Alabama is 2550. Mm -hmm. So if you hit someone um, or someone hits you and their limits are only 2550, well, if you've got one person injured, and let's assume their hospital bills are 25,000 or sure. exceed 25,000, the most that you're gonna be able to get from their coverage is that 25,000. So this would be kind of like a gap protection like when you purchase a vehicle. Correct, except for personal injuries, yes. Yes, okay. So what happens is in those situations, we then look to the driver and the owner of the vehicle to see if they have any assets to where, right. to determine if they in fact have anything that we could go after yeah. to collect a judgment. To take it from them. And if, they, a lot of people are judgment proof. Generally, mm -hmm. if you have a 2550, 25 is per person, 50,000 is per accident. Right. Um, and so, generally, when people have low limits like that, right. they're they're pretty much judgment proof. Sure. Uh, most people who have assets that they are concerned about potentially losing, mm. they're going to have higher limits on their policies. So you would the you would, okay all right. So but then in, so if you do get hit right, you would rather it be not maybe a Toyota Corolla more like like an Escalade. You don't want to get hit at all. Right. But if you did get hit. You would want to be driving probably, that Escalade, not hit by that Escalade. Right. Yes. Because yeah. yes. Cause that would hurt. <laughs> yes. Did you know that an Escalade is 100% tax write-off? Why is that? Because it weighs over 2,000 pounds or something like that. I think it's well over like, uh, yeah, so you can, because of the weight, I think it's over 6,000 pounds. Anything over that, you can write off 100% of it on your taxes, if I'm not mistaken now. I don't know. So. Um, we're getting the finger here. I don't know. Is but, that a countdown? One more one. minute. So in one more minute, we're going to take a commercial break. So <laughs> we're just going to we're going to ramble until that gets here. Well, what I was remember gonna always driving us. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is, so many people don't have that UM, UIM coverage, and so oh so in that uh, scenario I told you about, if your medical bills exceed twenty five thousand, and that's the most you can collect, and those people are judgment proof, sure. that's where you're going to go after. You're going to contact your own insurance. Uh, carrier, right. and then you're going to be able to collect under that UMUIM coverage. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back shortly. You may not believe it, but it's true. The 2024 Team 1 Chevys are here. All 2324 Silverado light duties have 2.9% financing for 72 months. The hottest new 24 Team 1 Chevy Blazer, 1.9% financing and no payments till April. And the number one selling family vehicle, the Equinox. 24 models, you got it. 1.9% financing and no payments till April. Team 1 Chevrolet, home of the best people, the best service, period. Some say college isn't for single parents or people who work full time. I'm here to prove them wrong. I'm a first generation American, the father of Dion, and a non-traditional student at Gadsden State Community College. As a sergeant in the Army National Guard, I've watched soldiers with degrees progress faster in their careers. So today, I'm in school, involved in the Veterans Up and Bound program, and excited to see what's in store for my career. I truly am earning my wings at Gadsden State. I'm Alan Parnell with Parnell Insurance Agency. We've been here in Oxford and Alabama, Tallapoosa, Georgia since 1990. With Auto Owners Insurance, we're able to give customers competitive pricing along with excellent coverages. Parnell Insurance can handle all of your personal, commercial, and life insurance needs. We have a very experienced staff, both personal and commercial. All together, we've got about 125 years experience. Come see what our insurance agency can do for you in Oxford, Alabama and Tallapoosa, Georgia. Auto Owners Insurance. At Campers Unlimited, we offer a no-pressure experience, no hidden fees, and great service after the sale, making us one of the fastest growing RV dealers in the Southeast. With our second location in Oxford, we offer a great selection of over 220 campers from top brands, including Grand Design. Our mission is to help friends and family spend time together in the great outdoors. At Campers Unlimited, you aren't just a customer, you are a family. Check out our inventory at campersunlimited.net or come see us at Gaston or Oxford. Welcome back to Balancing the Scales of Justice. Um, we're back from a commercial break and again, thank you for all tuning in this week and, and uh, watching our show and Darren, I we got Darren here with us, Southern Mama. Yeah. And so what do you have going on? We've talked a little bit about legal stuff, so tell us some fun stuff. What you got I going on? I don't know, girl. It's just, it, it's a rat race and I'm just in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just, 
I'm just running on that wheel like everybody else. Um, we got a lot going on. I've, um, I'm still touring, and uh, out back a minute ago, um, somebody, come here, Tater Tot. He's whining. Let me get him up here. Um, he, um, they asked me where I, if I'm still touring, and I'm like, yeah, I'm still touring. So we just got back from South Carolina. We had two sold out shows at their Performing Arts Center. It's been amazing. We started this in 2016 and we're on our ninth year right now. And Fantastic. so it is, I just, we're so blessed. I never thought it would ever have made it this far, but it, it, I mean, it has, it's been amazing. So between that and we still are doing weddings at the house, we still have the kayaking thing going on. We haven't opened that up for the season. I think we're gonna do that a little bit different this year, but more details to come on that. Um, but yeah, and now I've joined teams with 95.1 and uh, we're having great times with them. It's a, a local station here and we have a lot of great local stations in our area that's one of them and um, I think we actually do some work with TV 24 too so I'm doing that in the morning show with them and um, it's just it's go 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 it's not that which I th I know you can relate to that and yes. Um, I, yes. I, I, I like that I like I like staying busy I like staying going and I it, I feel I feel weird because uh, we call it work but it, you know that all, it sounds corny cliche but they say that expression you know if you ever do something you like doing you'll never work another day in your life Abs and I, I gen I genuinely believe that now. I, it took a long time, and it took a lot of went through a lot of stuff to find this. But uh, things are going great. We're, we're we're still on the road. We're still doing we're doing uh, really really wonderful. We got a party coming up. My my birthday party. I don't know when this airs, uh, but my it's the 16th. So I'm pretty excited. I turned 38 this year. My birthday's the 14th. We're gonna have the party on the 16th. Okay, but I turned great. 38 this year. Yay! Yeah, you're, I'm excited. You're getting closer, the inch and closer to that 40 I mark. I am. I'm almost there, baby. But you know, I've never been one of them that looks as that at, at age. Right. You know, and most of my friends have always been a lot older than I am. Um, and so I just, I'm just an old soul. I love that. So you know, I'm hitting my 40. 50. I'm hitting my 50 this year. Are you this year? Yes. In wow. May. So I will. Uh, I've enjoyed the last 10 years of my 40s, and you I'm about good. to be. Well, thank you. I'm about you to be telling them goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say hello to Ford, and you're saying goodbye to it. <laughs> I know. Wow, that's crazy because we look the same age. Uh, hey, well, thank you. I take that as a compliment. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so um, <laughs> this is you look. First of all, you don't look nowhere near 50. But I feel like, we talked about that on the show this morning, that I just, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a lot of fun. And uh, this is what happens when you don't use facial cream and you stay up late a lot. So, but it's been it's been fun. So but, Courtney gave me some really good cream. Yeah. Um, yes, I'll have to share that with you and let you use it. I used it's to really put good. I used to put the egg whites on my face. Did you ever do that? No, I didn't. Those those egg whites. yeah. Well, when I had really bad acne, right? It was said that it would like kind of. I don't think it did anything for me. I think I just smeared <laughs> egg yolk on my face for no reason. <laughs> but I think there might have been something to it though when it comes to the tightness of the skin because as the yolk begins to dry, like you do your and it like it's like real tight. You but you washed off and it was like really smooth. Yes. Oh, I have never heard of that before. There's a lot of. So how did you? So, so for our viewers who yeah. are watching, tell them how you used egg whites on your face. Well, like, that's all I did. I just, you just uh, break I just it open and it up. just rub it. There's some other home remedies that you can rub on your face that uh, we, you know, some of them is you're know, very hard to, you know, come up with and make. And but home remedies are the best. Some that we probably can't talk about on the show. But you know, the point is, is that there's 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 a lot of things out there we can do to take care of those those crow's feet. So. You know. Well, I need those. I you need know, a friend more. of mine. She said her mother always used hand lotion. Just plain old hand lotion. You know, I, when I was young, I met this lady, and she was in her 50s then, which, you know, now that we're, I'm, I'm pushing 50. 50 is not as old as I used to think it was. But I don't think 50 is old at all. I don't think you're old now until you're like in your 80s. I asked her, I, mean, I was like, how did you maintain your youth? And yeah. she said she just used regular soap and regular lotion. She yeah. didn't use anything special. And probably like she was seven years old. Oh, she, it Jamie's was mom does that. That's all she puts on is hand lotion. Girls, if you're watching, guys too, smear that stuff on there. Get it on there thick, you know? So Yeah, it know. was amazing how young she looked. But, so, but know, is Tater going to sleep? No, Tater, Tater's, Tater's, Tater's sleep. always ready to go to sleep. Tater always. is the best bed buddy in the whole wide world. Poodles are the best. You can love on them and cuddle them and you ain't got a bunch of hair stuck to you. So you were talking about your morning show. What do you do when you're traveling? We, I don't, I just don't do it. Okay. And that's another thing, the show's from six to 10. I'm there, I, I do the eight to 10. Well, eight, 15 to 10. I'm just not a morning, I still am not a morning person, you know? Okay, I'm just not. Don't. You can lay down. He uh, he he'll go to work. But I I told him so they actually extended the show an extra hour, and I was very grateful for that. So I think that probably had something to do with you know the fact that I wouldn't get up early in the morning. But he's did fine. they do he's that for gonna, you? He's not going to commit dog suicide. I promise he's good. Okay. Well, I didn't want him jumping off here. Come here, Tater. Get over here. You know you're messing right, so, up the show. So you Tater, your you're messing up. <laughs> can you still see us? Are we coming in clearly? Tater, if you if you knock out my speaker. 
So, but, um, where are you go, where are you touring to next? We, I, don't know, next? I don't even know where I go next. So do you know when? I don't even know where. Go to comediandarrenknight.com. There you go. That's our merchandise. Um, that's but you scroll to the very bottom of the page, you'll see all of our shows. I don't know where I'm going, Shirley. I don't know where I'm going. You just go where they tell I you to go. I just go where I'd go. I go where they tell me to go. And then when I get there, I'm like, I don't know where to go. And they say, this is where you go. And I get there. I'm there. You're here. And then I'm there. And so, do they tell you like the day ahead of time? Or they do. I, I'm just kidding. I'm being so good. I, I got a calendar, I, and I'm old fashioned. That's another thing about me is like I like I like the old fashioned style. So I'll get me like a, I got a paper, just a regular paper calendar. Right. That's where I keep all my stuff on. I just recently started using the calendar on my phone. I don't know if you know this or not, but they've actually got calendars on smartphones now. You can get on there, and you can. Mine even comes with a pen. Watch this. Now this is something to really see here. I've been Folks, living by a calendar those, for many years. Come on into your <laughs> tubes there. Get close. See what's happening here? I'm actually pulling this out of the, the back end here. You have an S Pen on I your phone. I got an S Pen. This took the oh, okay. this took the place of the note. And I can get on here and I can scribble and I can actually make stuff with it. Right. I can book dates on it. Nice. I'm I'm a technic I'm a technological man. People don't know this about me. I'm not only a funny comedian, at least I think I am, I'm also very tech savvy. Which is why you're learning about the S Pen. I'm so far behind the times. I'm the last one. <laughs> Listen, I'm the last one to get anything. I was the last one of my family and friends to get a debit card. I was the last one of my friends to get a smartphone. So why is that? I don't know. I think I like to let things run their course. Okay. Let I'm the la I'm serious. I really do. I'll, I mean, I'm not the. I'm not. I mean, and some. And a lot of times it works out for the best. Like for instance, like when flat screen TVs went out, came out. I really wanted one. I'm bougie. I wanted to put like a. And I still wanted. To, I want to put like a gold, like a big gaudy gold frame around my flat screen TV. I think it'd be cool on the wall. But anyway, I, I sat back and I let things happen. And I'm glad I did I bring the, the TV up because I got to skip the whole plasma episode, right? Right. So it was it was flat screen, but it was all plasma, and they were heavy. The flat screen yes. plasmas were heavier than the big, you know the big box TVs? Oh did my you, gosh, I remember Did you ever those. have the big 60 yes. inch TVs and had the back on the back, you know what I mean? Because that, that's where the back goes, is on the back of the back. And <laughs> it would it would stick out six feet from the tent of the wall. Well, I wanted a flat screen, I waited. I'm glad I did, I didn't have to deal with the big, and if you dropped them, it would just some oozing off this, this, this Ghostbuster type goo onto the floor, ruined carpet, your dog's licking up, it starts walking sideways. I never <laughs> had that problem. I never had that problem because I sat back and I waited, and sure enough, then came out the LCD screens. I'm, I'm talking, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm head bobbing with the cameraman over here. I'm loving it, this is like a great, everybody, bring everybody some coffee in here, we're having a group conversation. But I'm serious, I, I got to, I didn't have to spend all the money on the flats, on the, on the, on the plasma, I went straight to the LCD. So sitting back sometimes I think it's good, but I do that, I do always, I've always done that. But also when you wait, they work the kinks out. They work the kinks out, that's what I'm saying, they work the kinks out and. And generally by yeah. the time you decide to buy it, it's much cheaper than it much was cheaper. when it first came out, so we're well, able to save you. a lot more money. I'm not going to name the entity because I'm not here to beat up anybody, but I had a TV provider, we'll say, and I never knew anything about like the smart TVs. Now the smart TVs, now you, they first come out with the the the, the, the Hulu the, or the Rock, the Roku and the Fire Stick, whatever. I think that's one of your promoters. I think I can say that. And it would work on any older TV. Now this is the craziest thing. I don't know if y'all know this or not. This has been around for about five years. I figured it out yesterday. They have yesterday. actually got the apps in the television set. Yes. So I bought, I went to Sam's Club and I bought a TV. I'm not going to say the brand. But I bought a television and I got it home and I'm here to tell you I was so excited about what was happening in front of my eyes that I called my TV provider and canceled my 13 year service that I've had with them. Uh, because it was so absolutely outrageous. Right. And, and you can actually stream through certain apps local that was my biggest thing behind it is because I didn't want to lose my local TV. I can't lose my local 24. So, but you can actually download apps or you can uh, and watch, you know, local TV through those set apps or some entities like, um, or stations or whatever have their own apps. So you can yes. download or you can keep up with the local TV. Yes. Sold, sold. I called them up then I was like, turn it off, turn it off. They're like, we we're going to, we're going to send you a box. You got to send us our stuff back. I said, send it. I don't care. You know, name, so, the, name the place and play, you know, let's go. So until yesterday, you did not have a smart TV that already has the had, apps pre-installed. I had a flat screen, but I, no, I did not have a smart, I, well, I, I'm exaggerating. It was, it was more like a week ago. Okay. But yes, I did not have it until about a week ago. Yeah, I didn't. So I, you really are like, behind. The money, I'm so behind. So the money, and you would think <laughs> that Mr. Mr. Social Media would be all up on the, no, I'm the last one, folks. 
I'm the last one. I mean, and I was so tickled pink, so I was going, I didn't know what to do my old TV. I was like, what do I do? It don't, it don't do anything. They're like, you can get one of these, like I was talking about the Hulu thing, and it, or the Roku, whatever, and it links in with your stuff to the Wi-Fi. Y'all, I'm gonna tell you right now, if there's anybody out there that's like 70, 80 years old, years old and you're scared to death and you don't know anything about it, it's really easy. All you do is take the TV out of the box, plug it into the wall, hook it up to your Wi-Fi. Yes. You're done. Yes. You're done. Forget, Start. forget about it. Yes. Oh, uh, it's a whole new and world. And I don't know, do you have Alexa at home? Uh, I don't because I don't want them listening to me. Okay. Well, I'm old school. I don't want nobody <laughs> listening. And let me tell you, they'll call 911 on you. Will they? We have some crazy conversations at Sunnyside, okay? And Johnny was at her house the other day. She's a fellow comedian of mine, Red Squirrel. Look her up. She's amazing. And they, her and Phil were at home talking. I'm sorry, I'm getting a phone call. And we, uh, I'll talk to you about lunch in a minute. We had, uh, we, we had a phone, we, sorry, it's lunch is a minute. I don't know when you're watching this right now. We're and um, they were having a conversation at home. And Alexa said, okay, dialing emergency services now. Started calling them, because her and, Art, her and Phil were having oh, no. a discussion. They weren't, it wasn't nothing bad. They were just, right. you know, whatever. And it kicked, picked up on a few key words. This girl done started calling the 911 services there in St. Clair County, but Pell City, they live over in Pell City. Started calling the Pell City police. Wow. Yes. Yeah. See, I'm scared. That I, we have some crazy conversations. Shirley, you know, you've been to my house before. We talk about all kinds of stuff. I don't want them. I don't want everybody listening to me. I say that and phones are listening to, to us and, every second and of every day. I was just like, about to say that. What are we going to do? You what know, are we going to do? There, there are times that I won't have a conversation about um, something specifically, but there are times I just think of, like I have a yeah. thought about something and I'm thinking about it. Next thing I know, I get on my phone and I'm scrolling through social media and I see advertising and I'm like, okay, how did you read my mind? Like, I understand you hearing what I said, but how do you read my mind? They have that now. Yeah. They and have that now. And, and, and so that is, with that, with the phones, I said, you know what, mm -hmm. I'll just have Alexa because Alexa makes my yeah. life so much easier. And if they're going to hear me through my phone, why not have Alexa? If they're going to hear me anyway, yeah, why not? So, so what I was going to tell you is Alexa, I can, Alexa, turn on the whichever TV, the living room TV, yeah. however I have it programmed and saved. And Alexa will actually power on my television. And I can ask Alexa to decrease. Are you for real? I am for real. I can ask Alexa to decrease the volume, increase the volume. And I can sit on my couch. Somebody never. told me they had one that could turn their air conditioner on. Yes, if you have it, yes, if you have it Wi-Fi connected, oh my God. you can. I've been living under a yes. desk. I just yes. crawled out from under here right before the show. Yeah, this has been, Darren, thank you for coming on. <laughs> thank you and for having thank me. You, yes, thank y'all yes. for watching. Uh, it has been fun and, and funny. Of course, that's what you do. So, but anyway, thank y'all for tuning in this week, and we will see y'all next week back on Balance in the Scales of Justice.